we're back. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost in thought there. Chrono, what's that weird chanting? What is that weird? Ch oh, what have we got here? Hail Satan. Uh, or Vegas, whichever. That's whichever. Yeah, whichever comes first. Yep. <laughs> What? Sir Magus. Sir Magus. Whatever. Magus. Yeah, I know. 400 years have passed since Magus commanded the mystics and waged war against the humans. When Lavos is awakened, all humans are doomed. And you as well, for some... Because, and you don't seem to realize that. Mwaha! Anyway. <laughs> yes, well. All right, Ben, you At least the humans will be doomed, as, doomed along with us, so fuck it. Ben, do you want to tell them about your feelings regarding the uh, Samurai Jack ending? Without spoiling it? <laughs> if that's possible. Oh, God. Uh, no, unfortunately it's not going to be possible because it requires a very in-depth uh, discussion of the fifth season of Samurai Jack and basically a complete breakdown of Samurai Jack's character. To be honest, I'm not even sure we're going to have time in this episode to go over everything. <laughs> no, not, not as heated as you get about it. Ah, <laughs> oh, hello, could I interest you in a weapon? Yes, I'd like to buy one. What I will say is that I don't like it, but not for the reasons that a lot of Holy people hell, seem to Holy hell, I'm like not... That's so expensive. There's no oh, way. you want expensive? Go to the shop in the Mystics Village. You'll yeah. see expensive real quick. Now, to be fair, their weapons are absolutely worth the price. But, <laughs> it's like... Should you decide to return to the Truce Village, use a shortcut through the cave in the mountains to the north. As uh, well, I, I think I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. To try and make an excessively long rant... So much shorter. Uh, I am really pissed off that basically they made the bittersweet ending they they were going Death for. Death to the Mystics enemies. Way too bitter. And not at all sweet. Yeah, basically that's how I'll leave it right now. If people want to hear their, my freaking epic rant about Samurai Jack, then sure, I'll talk your ear off for the entire time. But... Oh, these guys are pretty worthless yeah. with my levels. They kind of are... Yeah. I mean, I know, there's, <laughs> I know there's tougher versions later, but... Oh, absolutely there are. And yeah, they will kick your ass if you try to fight them right now. <laughs> I just got Antipode! Antipode! Alright, giving Marley the, the new bow we got while we're in. I actually had a friend try and tell me that's not a word. It is a word. I, I was like, yeah, that's totally a word. No, they just and made they, they just made it. made it up. I mean they could have. They've done that. I mean, before. yeah, they could have, but they Luminar, didn't. for example. You know, it's like so it wouldn't right, be totally fun. But no, they actually it, it is correct and they actually used it correctly. So yeah, good on them. You actually learned something from this game. It does it all! Alright, I'm killing that thing first. No, let it live. No. It deserves to live. No, it goes now. <laughs> I don't actually remember what it does, but I have this. You have to kill it with magic. Yeah. Otherwise, I it get, takes like. Four, four I, I, caught, I caught that by the three damage I did. Yeah. But I have the distinct depression will be very annoying if I don't get rid of it now. Yep. Goodbye. It will be because it heals everything. And yeah, as as we uh, as evidence from fact, our previous I videos, I hate enemies that constantly heal each other. In fact, I believe it actually revives these uh, octo blushes as well, if I recall correctly. I don't know. Usually, I just kill them outright as soon as I find them, but so they never really get a chance to do much of anything. But yeah, anytime there's a an enemy that buffs the others, even if it's not too much of a threat in and of itself, you want to get rid of that bastard first. Oh yeah, if it buffs or heals it, then, you know, let the aggro guide you, you know? And he's gotta go. It's not like there's a backline or anything from the nine mine, so yeah, just blow him up. <laughs> blow him up good. I'm still getting used to the whole uh, backline idea, because I've been going back and playing older Final Fantasies, and oh, I, yeah. I suppose the backline kind of works like, uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, Lost Odyssey, but in the in Lost Odyssey, there's basically a wall effect. Oh. Like, things in the backline take less damage than things in the front line. Yeah. And uh, apparently that's how uh, uh, the early Final Fantasy worked. Which makes yeah. sense, because Hironobu Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy, is the same one who made Lost Odyssey. Oh, so okay. he he brought that back in the sense that um, that it's using the frontline backline uh, uh, methodology to uh, turn based combat. Yep. But I'm not I'm not familiar with how it works. So Ben, if you want to elaborate for me. Uh, well, basically a backline. 
Well, there are several types of backlines out there, actually. The one that you're talking about is one where effectively, you know, enemies just stand behind each other. And if you attack them um, while they have enemies in front of them, then they take reduced damage or they're unattackable, effectively. There are other types of backlines out there as well. For example, Radiant Historia, which, yes, we will be playing on here, uh, does it where does a similar thing to that, but you can also manipulate it based on that back line I mean, in different ways compared to the front line I and mean, middle line. There are also aspect. There are also games that allow your party to have a back line as well for similar effects, where in fact you take half damage, but you yourself deal half damage on attacks with most weapons. Usually they give you a range type weapon in order to allow you to do full damage, but it's not going to be as good overall whenever they do it. Like, a bow will be available, but it will do, like, maybe 20% less damage compared to the sword of the same level. So... I just want to point out the, uh, um, the brilliance of design here in Chrono Trigger, how where you enter this cave immediately after getting your magic, so even if you don't do the Speccio fight, like I didn't, uh, you're fighting enemies that are only affected by magic, Mm -hmm. And so the game, in that way, teaches you to use it oh, yeah. uh, in a way that isn't so forced. Yeah, it basically makes makes it so that, you know, there, it ba basically also warns you that in a very easily approachable way that there will be fights where enemies are immune to certain things or at least take such reduced damage, you know, assuming that you miss the skeletons at the beginning in the prison, because those also have uh, certain immunities and such like that. But, or if you did, you know, or if this is your first time through and the uh, dragon tank battle didn't tip you off, then again, if it's your first time through, you wouldn't know. Oh, you wouldn't have magic at that point anyway. But, you know, if you didn't use fire on the dragon tank, thanks to the, thanks to the little document that you could find back there, this basically tells you how the game will be, where, where you can't always avoid enemies that have weaknesses, so you might as well get used to it right now. Get used to it and adapt. Yep. Which is probably my favorite uh, type of... Uh, my favorite thing about turn-based combat is that it, it establishes a formula, and then rather than uh, throw, completely throwing you off by adding new things constantly, yep. it slowly trickles them in and teaches you to adapt. Exactly. And... and it grows complexity as you go on. Yeah, which of course make, means that you grow in complexity as well, such that when you come across, and the really good ones will show you that by throwing battles in later on that are much easier than the battles that you just fought recently to give you a chance to really be see, oh yeah, we took, oh my goodness, like I have come a long way since before and my character is way better than he was. So you get that nice little comparison of how you used to be versus how you are now. Like, yeah, these guys are complete pushovers now. Holy crap, like I can kill them like six different ways now. And the best ones will do will give you that feeling, even if you don't necessarily have brand new techniques to use. You just knew oh how to use them in different ways. Of course, that sort of thing is very rare and hard to do, but it's out there. It is definitely out there, and Chrono Trigger is one of the ones that does it on occasion too. For example, the guards at the cave entrance, like we were just saying, we have like 15 different ways to kill those bat. Bastards at this point, we just attack, we just straight brute force it because we were trying to save resources and just uh, because Kenton is a little, little bastard who just likes to brute force his way through everything. But you know. I do not like to brute force my way uh, through everything. Uh, uh, I got at least three episodes that would beg to differ on that. That's not brute forcing, that's rushing. Uh, there's, there's, between, uh, uh, there's a okay, difference okay, between okay. brute forcing and trying to do things quickly. If I'm trying to do things <laughs> quickly, that oftentimes requires me to use the most effective strategy, which will be quicker oh, than just okay. attempting to brute okay. force. So, it's all so there's a the difference between rushing oh, so and brute force. Oh, so efficiency is what you're saying. It's about efficiency and not the fact that you're an impatient little bastard right over there. Yeah, I, I am absolutely I impatient. I'm not denying that. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean that I'm brute forcing. <laughs> uh. 
Now, I'm actually, uh, I know that I'm supposed to get get into the water and go up into that area where the save point is. Yep. But I don't remember how to get there. Oh, okay. I, I was one. I, I was like, all right, yeah. Um, I actually think this might be the way. This is the cave that I actually remember the least, just because for me. This is actually the least memorable part of the game right here. It's not a memorable part of the game. I forgot that you do it. No, like, I remember that you did it and that it was a magic-based thing specifically for this, but there's not really any character moments in this. Nah, it's just a, it's just a there, waste, waypoint. Waystation. Like, it, get, it imparts a little tiny bit of information for the characters, and the thing with the town... Town is important to establish that mystics in the present hate the humans in the present and vice versa for the 400 year or war from back in the day. The war That's 400 it. years ago. Yeah. That and you get to meet Malquire if you didn't really talk with him. Malkior. Malkior if you didn't really talk with him in the uh, uh, fair. So that's important too. And You I know, get... it might be Malquire. <laughs> yeah, Malquire. I've never actually heard that one said out loud so I don't know for sure what the pronunciation is. Yeah. Malquire is, Malquire is easier so I just always went with that. Um, I know I'm quick to cr pr correct you on pronunciation all the time, but, but if that's not if that's how you pronounce it, I want you to know that I'm not. I would I wouldn't correct you if I didn't think. Oh, no, or no, know no, that no, 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 you're, good, you're good. I don't care. You know, I don't mind. I I am stuck with pronunciations anyway, so I'm usually always getting pronunciations wrong in games. So I'm glad you don't mind because I I hate. People telling me stuff I already know. It oh, infuriates yeah. me. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, you know, Ben, you do that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, this cave is probably, in my opinion, the weakest part of the entire game, just because it has a little sliver of a story thing thrown in at the very end that honestly could have been at the town somewhere, and then they could just have a land bridge linking this town. Linking the Mystic Town to Garudia, and you could have just walked across there. You think this really is a weaker anything. section than the Millennial Fair? Yeah, I really do. The Millennial Fair it has serves, a lot of It serves a purpose, but I don't care about mini games. I know, but it's still fun and unique and interesting and memorable. That's the important part, is it's a memorable sequence that you don't really forget. This, absolutely you forget about. You forget about it the first time you play it. Like, the only reason I even remembered that this was a thing is I played this game so damn much that it's impop- that I pretty much had it committed to memory, almost. So, no, this... Like, this- this dungeon could easily have been cut from the game and nobody would really have missed it. I mean, yes, it does serve If you can a call function. it a dungeon. It serves a function of teaching you about- Death to magic. the Mystic's enemies! But they could have actually had, like, an encounter at the village where if you went to the cult thing, they could have just attacked you. Or there could have been, like, a bunch of mystics saying, Hey, you're trespassing at the border, and then you just have, like, a forced boss... You have the forced boss fight at the border of the town, and that's it. Like, they didn't need to have an entire dungeon here, here to do this. This was except... I mean, this it's, was it's a drawn-out way to teach you to use magic. It's drawn out in the bad way, though. Like, again, there's nothing memorable, there's nothing that really needs to be here, and I want... And I must wonder what they could have done with the space that this dungeon takes up. It really is... This is it serves it. its purpose. It, it, could, the, it could have been done in a more memorable way, but it does it, do what it was designed to do. It does what it was designed to do, but so, but compared to the rest of the game, that's why I say it's the weakest part of this game. It's still, compared to other games i played, this part is amazing. Because the fact that they were able to somehow tie this into the story, despite it, it being such a lackluster dungeon, is incredible. You know that cave at the beginning of Final Fantasy IV? That's a weak dungeon. <laughs> you know what then I'm talking the, about. Then there are the dungeons of all of Final Fantasy 2. That's all I'm going to say about that. We don't talk about Final Fantasy 2. Oh, don't we? We're talking about Final, Final Fantasy Well, seeing as, seeing as this is a series is called The Greatest Games Ever Played, we which, can means, we'll which never means we're never, never going to play we'll never Final Fantasy 2, <laughs> we can go ahead and talk about how bad it is. Yeah, we'll never showcase it here, but we can certainly talk about it. My God. No, absolutely. We need to compare things to well, things, the dungeons you know? in Final Fantasy 2. Uh, let's oh, start no. with the fact that there are uh, pointless treasure rooms with 50 enemies in them and no treasure. Dead yeah. ends yeah, that you constantly say, the are going into. The monster closets? Yeah, those things suck and were a horrible ass idea. Not to mention just the confusing as hell dungeon layout. Just, oh god, the amount of wandering around I had to do. 
Uh, I'm surprised you actually played through two. I did. Like, uh, I got a. Like, I played it in college. Uh, I was. This is like, before you knew. Yeah, this is before I knew, and I was like, well, I'm already like the story is interesting, kind of, and I'm. Interested it is an interesting story. If, it, if there's anything redeeming about two, is that the story is yeah. somewhat interesting. College, yeah, college was where I played all the Final Fantasies before six. Like that's basically well, all except five. I've never played Final Fantasy five. That's the only one. That's the one with X Death. I've never played it. Sorry. I started it. I started it, but I haven't gotten far enough to. There are only so many hours in a year, damn it. <laughs> so. Uh, but nah, like, this dungeon is miles above a lot what a lot of RPGs can accomplish. It's still the weakest. It's still, in my opinion, the weakest one of Chrono Trigger because it's just not memorable like all the other ones are. But it's still the weakest one in Chrono Trigger. It's not the weakest. Mo there are other weak moments in Chrono Trigger as well. I'll talk about the those when we get to them. But, you know, this one un is the first one where it's kind of weak. Ah, uh, counterattacking. Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't hit him. Yep. That's this boss's thing is, oh, there's a counterattack mechanic. That's <laughs> good. So do I just wait until he's... Pretty uh, much, yeah. This is your time to heal yourself if you need to. I'm, I'm, I'm good for now. All right. Brief counterattack break. There you go. And attack. He's like, I can't hold this plasma longer. Fuck. Ah. Well, now he's right, he's right back into it, which means we're about to get counterattacked. No, he was in that pose before. Like, okay, so it, it'll it'll tell you when he's about to. Yeah, come. you have to watch the actual text and stuff. I'm watching the text. Oh, okay. Uh, but you know, he, he does that pose and it threw me off. Okay. You better not. Okay. Yeah, this is your time to just like kind of heal a little bit. I was like, you better not attack Marley. No. <laughs> Thank God for Aura World. Seriously, mass healing. Woo! Doesn't do. It doesn't heal a whole lot, but it definitely heals enough. Oh to no, it heals you. quite a bit. It, yes, heals, it, it heals you enough to keep you in the I game. I love that technique name. Yes, indeed. It's like the hell. Yeah, that's the. It's like they're not even a technique but, names. Once again, they're not even technique no, names. No, he what, was in counter attack. They're just yeah. what he says. Well, this is gonna be fun. We get to see his ultra special technique now. Unless he dies. Yep. Yeah. Hey. Take that. Bit. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Uh, here we go. Here we we'll go for what? If only the great Magus who brought forth Lavos 400 years ago had destroyed the human race, the world would have belonged to us mystics. <laughs> and there you go. Blink and you miss it. Sliver of context to justify this dungeon's presence. Now we know about. Now we have the connection between Lavos and the Lavos and Magus. So now we're going back to 600 AD. Yep. In the Middle Ages, Magus created Lavos, the destroyer for this planet's future. Now, they mentioned Magus when you first go to the Mid Middle Ages, but yeah. now you get a little bit more context and the connection to Lavos. Yeah, and of course they could have done all that back in the village. <laughs> or at the border of the village with a single battle. That's if, all they needed. <laughs> if we go to the Middle Ages and take out Magus, can we change history? We could use the gate at the fairgrounds. Woo! Jump in. I yes, don't see why not. The whirlpool. Yes, absolutely. This nothing, nothing bad could possibly happen doing this. Now, if you if you remember from Final so Fantasy VI, when you're going underwater in that that's six, right? When you go underwater. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you are <laughs> constantly fighting enemies, and you can't like you know do anything between that. You just have yep. to deal with it. Mm. No, like I love the I love the fact that they jumped into a. That they basically crossed an ocean through a whirlpool and were somehow able to hold their breath the entire time and not die. Yeah, that's how that works, right? Yeah. That's how you get from one end of the globe to the other. You yeah, absolutely. I mean, a whirlpool is basically just a nice little walkway that you go through underneath the water, right? It's not to it's not a total death trap that will kill anyone who goes into it. No. Basically, you treated the whirlpool like a like a whirlpool. A gate. A or gate, like a which, gate. Which is what it looks like. So, flat, yeah. <laughs> uh, new New gate tower. Yes, yes it is. And we'll explore that and go back to the Middle Ages next time. Oh. On the greatest games ever made. Alright guys, see you next time.